Well, from new fighter jets to scientific research, the question that a lot of Americans have are how are their tax dollars being spent? And you might be surprised to find out. It is all detailed in the annual Congressional Pig Book, a database of what the Citizens Against Government Waste deems unnecessary. The 24th edition of the Little Pink Book is being released to the public today. And joining us now for more on this year's Pig Book, Senator Jeff Flake. Senator, thanks for being with us. Hey, right, thanks for having me on. So what is new in this year's Pig Book? Well, it's a lot of old, unfortunately. Uh, some of these earmarks that uh, came in years ago uh, still find life here in, in new appropriations measures. Uh, one, for example, uh, funding for the East-West Center in Hawaii, $5.6 million earmark, or 5.9, I believe. Um, and this earmark has been going and going and going, even though the State Department uh, over the years has said we don't want it, uh, but still it continues. That's just one example. Yeah, so Senator, when con to your point, when Congress banned earmarks in 2011, former House Speaker John Boehner said stripping lawmakers' ability to direct federal funds to pet projects was a critical step to restore the public trust. So why are we still seeing this waste? Mm -hmm. Well, let me say it's a lot better now than it was at the height of earmarks in 2006. I think the total uh, value of earmarks in 2006 was uh, $29 billion or so. We're significantly uh, down from that. But still, on the margins, there are earmarks. And part of it is uh, the process that we have. Uh, instead of doing r regular appropriations measures one by one, we do one big omnibus bill at the end of the year with everything thrown in. And sometimes we don't find out what's in that bill until long after. And, and whenever you have a lack of transparency like that, you're going to get unnecessary spending. And, and we still have some. When you talk about that lack of transparency, and the waste in government right now, we were just talking with Katrina Pearson from the right. Trump campaign. Do you think that that has helped to lead to the rise of anti-establishment -establish candidates like Donald Trump? I do. You bet. I, I think people are expecting us, uh, Republicans, we control the House and the Senate. They say, why is there unnecessary spending still going on? Uh, like I said, it's, it's better than it was before. We've held down discretionary spending overall uh, to lower levels. Uh, however, uh, we still, because of the way the process works now, where we don't do regular appropriations measures, uh, we're going to see unnecessary spending. And it does lead to a lot of cynicism. And people saying, why can't you fix this thing? Some of us are trying. Uh, well, sir, that leads the question to uh, Donald Trump again. You said uh, some time ago that the rise of Mr. Trump filled you with concern and dread. And the question is, if he's ultimately the GOP <laughs> nominee for president, will you support him? Well, hey, uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I don't think that he will be the nominee. Uh, his uh, positions on on trade, uh, for example, and on immigration, uh, I, I don't think is uh, where the party needs to be. I'm very concerned about that. Uh, but uh, we're a long way from having a nominee. When you have, I guess, business overseas in dealings, even with uh, fellow members of the Senate, what is the discussion about what Donald Trump is doing and, and sort of the image that is being put out there about America by him now as one of the candidates? Uh, there is concern, I can tell you. I'm not the only one that is concerned about our place in the world and the concern that uh, uh, foreign leaders and, and others around the, the, the world uh, have about our place in the world. Um, I, I don't think that uh, the view that Mr. Trump has, has laid out uh, fits with uh, Republican philosophy. Um, and I, I, so I, I am concerned, and I, I think uh, I'm glad we have a long way till the convention still. So, sir, does that lend credence to Donald Trump's uh, claims, his allegations that establishment uh, party members are against him, that they don't want to see him succeed, and that is somehow, lack of a better word, trumping the will of the voters? Well, I, you can call it establishment, you can call it anything you want, but uh, I think those of us who have held to uh, the pillars of Republican philosophy, limited government, economic freedom, individual responsibility, are concerned with some of the uh, policies uh, that have been embraced by Donald Trump. Uh, a, a religious test for people to come to this country? Uh, come on, that, that's just not, uh, not Republican. You talked about crossing that bridge when we come to it in regards to Donald Trump and a nomination. When we get to the convention, if we have a contested convention, good or bad for your party? Well, I, I don't think that anybody's likely to have the necessary votes to uh, 
to get it on the first ballot. So it will be an open convention, in my view, and uh, that uh, you know that it is what it is, and uh, and we'll take it. Uh, but I, I think we're a long way from having a nominee, and I don't think that nominee will be Donald Trump in the end. Sir, before we let you go, I want to ask you about a report released Tuesday from UNICEF. It talks about how children have been used as suicide bombers by Boko Haram in Nigeria the past two years. As a member of the Subcommittee on African Affairs, what more can be done to stop those militants? Well, we are working with the government. Fortunately, we have a government now in Nigeria that is better to work with. Uh, we're also working with some of the border countries, Cameroon um, in particular here. And so I hope that uh, our interventions, we do have some special uh, operations people there in, in, uh, in Cameroon. Uh, so we are trying. Uh, and we, with a better government in Nigeria, hopefully we'll have some more success. But it's a difficult, tough situation. Boko Haram is a horrible organization, as we all know. Senator Jeff Flake, thank you so much for your time, sir. All right. Thank you much.